Hello and welcome to Uzreport World News and my name is Bahram Ghaffarov. President Shavkat Mirzoyev instructed to accelerate the privatization of enterprises with the state shares at a video conference held on Wednesday. Marifat Abdusharipova has the details. The president instructed to ensure the sale of 12 objects by the end of March this year. The list of objects includes the recreation areas Builder Sai and Charvak in the Tashkent region, as well as the business center Poitakht and Techno Market Malikia in Tashkent. In addition, it was instructed to ensure the sale of the state share in 18 enterprises, such as Quartz, Jizakh Plastics and Kefalat. The president stressed that from these sales by the end of the first half of the year, the budget should receive some 95 million US dollars. Uzbekistan is intending to abolish the excise tax on mobile communication services in 2023. According to a recent decree signed by President Shavkat Mirzoyev, from January 1, 2022, the excise tax rate on mobile services will be reduced to 10%. And starting from January 1, 2023, the excise tax will be abolished at all. The excise tax rate for the provision of mobile communication services currently is 15%. The Uzbek Service for Sanitary and Epidemiological Welfare and Public Health was instructed to develop an algorithm and a separate procedure for vaccination of the population, the Republican Special Commission said on Thursday. This process is to be carried out exclusively on a voluntary basis and first of all among the following population groups. Elderly people aged over 65, people with chronic diseases, medical professionals, employees of kindergartens, schools and universities employees of internal affairs bodies who are in direct contact with the population. President Shavkat Mirzoyev on February 10 instructed to accelerate the vaccination process. The Ministry of Health was instructed to compile an electronic list of vaccinated people, create more than 3,000 vaccination points in family polyclinics and rural medical centres and create an additional 800 mobile teams. The Republican Commission has also analyzed the results of phase 3 clinical trials of Russian Sputnik V vaccine. According to the deputy head of the Sanitary and Epidemiological Welfare and Public Health Service Botir Kurbanov, the certification of the vaccine will be held in an accelerated mode. The process may take up to 15 to 20 days. In a bid to boost domestic tourism, the Uzbek government will soon provide discounts for flights in the Republic. Moreover, new opportunities are provided to two operators and travel agents. The state program provides a set of measures to further support the tourism sector. Tourism, the state, is determined by the strategic branch, the direction of development of our economy. Among the priorities for the current year is the development of pilgrim tourism as well as domestic tourism. In order to put this mechanism into practice, a procedure for issuing these subsidies has been developed jointly with the State Committee for Tourism Development, the Ministries of Finance and Transport, as well as a number of interested ministries and departments. Thanks to the state program, great opportunities are created for us. For domestic tourism, for example, Urgenj Fergana provides great benefits. If a traveler buys A tickets to travel around the country for the purpose of traveling, he will be given a discount of 25%. If it is through a travel agency, then he will be given an additional 15% discount. If we have, it is 40%. Uzbekistan has lifted all restrictions on aid travel with Germany. The corresponding decision was made by Special Republican Commission on February 11. All inbound, outbound and transit flights between Uzbekistan and Germany are allowed to resume again. The Uzbek government banned entry from Germany and seven other countries on December 21, amid the deterioration of the epidemic situation in these states and, in particular, with the emergence of the British strain of coronavirus. The Uzbek government has decided to complete the transition to the Latin alphabet, the Press Service of Justice Ministry said on Thursday. ID cards, residence permits of foreign citizens and documents of stateless people, official documents, names of streets, places, organizations, advertisements must now be in Latin script. The activities of central, print and electronic media, internet sites, publishing houses, printing companies are also to be carried out in the Latin alphabet. 
to improve the level of Russian language proficiency in Uzbekistan, the Ministry of Education of Russia will raise more than 1 million US dollars this year. This was agreed upon on Thursday when Russian-Uzbek Roundtable on Cooperation in the Educational Field was held on the online platform of the Expo Russia-Uzbekistan exhibition. According to the Ministry of Education, as part of the first stage of the project in 2020, 32 specialists from Russia tested about 4,000 local teachers and 500 students for knowledge of Russian language in all 14 regions of Uzbekistan. In 2021, the first 100 teachers and methodologists will be sent to the Republic to work in schools. British television channel BBC World News was barred from airing in China on Friday. This came just one week after Britain's media regulator revoked Chinese state television, CGTN's, license to broadcast in the United Kingdom. China's National Radio and Television Administration said an investigation found BBC World News' China coverage had harmed the country's national interests and undermined unity. The agency added that the channel, quote, seriously violated regulations, and its application to air for another year would not be accepted. The English-language news channel is not prolific in China and only appears in some hotels and residences. But two Reuters journalists in China confirmed the channel had gone blank on their screens. The BBC said it was, quote, disappointed and defended its news reporting as impartial, fair, and without fear of favor. British Foreign Minister Dominic Robb condemned China's move, calling it an unacceptable curtailing of media freedom. He added, this latest step will only damage China's reputation in the eyes of the world. At a regular news briefing, U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price commented, uh, It's troubling that as the PRC restricts outlets and platforms from operating freely in China, Beijing's leaders use free and open media environments overseas uh, to promote misinformation. Last week, Britain revoked CGTN's license to broadcast in the UK after finding it was wrongfully held by Star China Media. China criticized the ruling as politically motivated and said they reserved the right to make a necessary response. The European Union and the World Health Organization will spend 40 million euros, just under 50 million dollars, over the next three years to ensure better access to COVID-19 vaccines in poorer countries in the region. The WHO Regional Director for Europe, Hans Kluger, told a virtual news briefing on Thursday that Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Georgia, Moldova and Ukraine will benefit from the initiative which focuses on readiness, information campaigns, supplies and health worker training. At this point, the overwhelming majority of European countries remain vulnerable. Right now, it's a thin line between the hope of a vaccine and a false sense of security. Based on information from 29 out of the 37 countries currently vaccinating in the European region today, 7.8 million people have completed their immunization series. That is equivalent to only 1.5% of the population of those 29 countries. The two-dose AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine developed with Oxford University had been clouded by doubts after a small study showed it was less effective at preventing mild or moderate disease with the fast-spreading South African variant of the virus. Kluger said while the variant was of particular concern, it was not yet widespread in the region but needs to be monitored carefully. 2020 was a roller coaster for global economies, but for the Eurozone at least, the drop in the final quarter appears to have been less steep than expected. Gross domestic product in the 19 countries sharing the euro fell by 0.7% quarter on quarter, according to new statistics on Tuesday. Year on year, the decline was just over 5%. Initial estimates also indicate the region is heading for another, probably steeper decline in the first quarter of this year. But one economist told Reuters that the slump will not be as sharp as that seen in the first half of 2020, adding that a noticeable recovery is likely to set in again from spring. 
The latest figures showed the second and third largest Eurozone economies, France and Italy, pulled down the overall result. They posted quarterly GDP declines of 1.3% and 2% respectively. Meanwhile, Germany inched up 0.1% from the third quarter and Spain grew 0.4%. Economists said the fourth quarter slump was milder than in the first half of the year because restrictive measures had been adapted and were less severe. Amsterdam overtook London to become Europe's biggest share trading centre in January. The city has benefited from Brexit, forcing European Union investors to use platforms inside the bloc. Exchanges in the Dutch capital traded over $11 billion a day in January, just ahead of London's $10.4 billion. That's according to figures from SIBO Europe Exchange, which operates in both cities. It compares with an average of over $20 billion traded daily in London during 2020. The rise of Amsterdam was well flagged ahead of Britain's departure from the EU. Share platforms began preparations for opening hubs in the Dutch capital in 2016. The EU had been clear it wanted euro-dominated financial activity, shifted from London to build up its own capital market and have direct supervision. Some derivatives trading has also moved from London to Amsterdam, and trading in EU carbon emissions will move to the Dutch city later this year. Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, has won her privacy case against the British tabloid, which printed extracts of a letter she wrote to her estranged father. A London High Court judge issued a summary judgment in her favour on Thursday. Meghan, who is the wife of Queen Elizabeth's grandson, Prince Harry, had sued publisher Associated Newspapers after the Mail on Sunday printed parts of the handwritten letter she sent to her father, Thomas Markle, in August 2018. Meghan wrote the five-page letter after their relationship collapsed in the run-up to her wedding in May 2018, which her father missed due to ill health and after he admitted to posing for paparazzi pictures. In two days of hearings, her lawyers say printing the personal and sensitive letter was a triple-barreled assault on her private life, her family life and her correspondence, and plainly breached her privacy. The paper argued the Duchess always intended the letter's contents to become public, and it formed a part of a media strategy, pointing out she had admitted in court papers discussing it with her communication secretary. Judge Mark Warby ruled the articles did breach her privacy. However, he said issues relating to her copyright of the letter would need to be settled at a trial. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 eked out modest gains Thursday as investors bet on more fiscal stimulus. But comments by President Joe Biden that China could, in his words, eat our lunch, weighed on investor sentiment. At a meeting in which he told senators he would work to modernize U.S. infrastructure, he said the U.S. must raise its game to compete with China. Tech stocks Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Intel led the rally that drove the Nasdaq up four-tenths percent and the S&P two-tenths percent. The Dow closed flat. National Security's chief market strategist, Art Hogan. This has been the week of the pause, which is okay because last week was the week of the rebound rally. The price of Bitcoin rose to an all-time high after digital currencies gained more institutional support. Credit card company MasterCard said it plans to offer support for some cryptocurrencies on its network this year, while Bank of New York Mellon, America's oldest bank, formed a new unit to help clients hold, transfer, and issue digital assets. Pot stocks got slammed, reversing Wednesday's outsized gains. Tilray dropped by half, and Afria sank 36%. After the markets closed, shares of Disney rose. The entertainment giant's quarterly revenue dropped less than expected. Its fast-growing video streaming business helped offset some of the damage the health crisis has dealt on its theme park and movie studio businesses. PepsiCo sounded a note of optimism Thursday as it bets on consumer lifestyles returning to normal as economies reopened and more people get vaccinated. The soft drink and snacks conglomerate has fared better than its larger rival Coca-Cola when it comes to navigating through the health crisis. Pepsi reported a bigger than expected jump in fourth quarter sales on Thursday with stay-at-home consumers stocking up on the company's snacks like Tostitos and Cheetos. Sales of the Gatorade sports drink were also pretty solid. 
In order to meet a surge in demand, Pepsi last year launched a direct-to-consumer website that offers special flavors and specialized bundles of its top-selling products, a move that is paying off by helping to offset the plunge in its food service business. That's the unit that caters to restaurants, movie theaters, and vending machines, making it the most vulnerable amid the health crisis. Pepsi beat quarterly profit forecasts. So far, these were the latest news for today. Goodbye. Take care.